Let me go to um, Deputy Catherine Connolly, who joins me on the line. Uh, this is in relation to the brand new psychiatric unit, which has been built beside the old boiler house, backing on to Newcastle Park. It's been built and finished, indeed, for a long number of months. There have been staffing issues, and some of the staff have refused to move into it unless the staffing issues have been addressed. We spoke to the INMO about that. We also spoke, indeed, to Joe Tracy, who's a member of the Psychiatric Nurses Association, and he told us that there was issues there. And I'm going back to October last year. Catherine, good morning to you. So she joins me on line. Catherine, morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm going back to then. You're going back to December. You were told it would be open in March. And I have a piece of paper in front of me today telling me that it'll be open in June 2018. And, uh, Just hand it to me now. And, and where's that information from? I'll tell you, it came from the Western Regional Health Forum, where it said, question, uh, which came from Council Report Canada, what is the current status of the new mental health unit at USG, the date for completion and opening, and full cost of same? The building was handed over from contractors last month. It's currently being equipped and prepared for operation. The planned date for operation of the unit is June 2018. The project cost is £20 million. I'm only after getting this that's very good. That's, um, 15 uh, seconds ago now. That's about the third or the fourth opening time we've been given now, and yeah. each one has changed. And the last one I got told me that it was the building regulations to make sure they were compliant with building regulations. There wasn't a mention of staff. So I thought that was very strange, that a building... Building regulation on a new building? That's right. That they, yeah, <laughs> they were going through the process of ensuring it was complying with building regulations, and that mm. was the delay. So, I, I, I mean, this, first of all, this is unacceptable. We can't keep having dates changed and different reasons given. You were able to say it's staffing issues. That has never been made clear in any of the Dáil replies. Really? Never. It, staffing issues have never been mentioned or drawn to the Minister's attention or drawn to my attention as his TD. And I followed up this since the day I was elected. And in fact, outside of housing and um, the hospital issue, mental health has been one of the major subjects of all our debates, all TDs. Uh, and so there were because two it's a serious problem that's been underfunded for decades. Well, well, well there are two aspects. There's the practical problem in Galway in the building, which I come back to, yeah. and then there's the review of the vision for change. That was a wonderful document from 2006 to January 16, a 10 year document. That has never been reviewed. We're two into two and a half years later almost and that document still hasn't been reviewed again tabling questions and not just me other TDs as well and so what we got was a 12 week review of international literature which will help with a review sometime in the future in relation to the vision for change and what I would just say about that is the vision for change was a brilliant document it set out everything it had a whole section on suicide back in 2006 and the serious problem that it was recognised that recognised the importance of having the family involved in care recognised the importance of community mental health teams None, no, no community mental health team has been rolled out in Galway but on a general level that vision has never been reviewed now I don't see a need to review it I see a need to implement it hmm. that was the problem and actually they had an independent implementation body which set for two three year periods did a great job analysed what was good and said what wasn't happening and what, the government abolished it so the actual independent review taking it out of the hands of government because it was so important and that's what the vision for change set okay. out but so that, that's the background okay, so in relation to the place in Galway we have, if, we, no, if, we take, if we take yeah. holistically just yeah. take mental health services in the west of Ireland if you take the ban the slow tobacco the closure of the beds if you take this state of the unit in UHG and the tobacco that's been there and staff walking out if you take the new unit has now yeah. been built if you look at the lack of the daycare centres if you look I mean the teams that are working within it and all the time Attempted suicide and suicide is on the rise. It's absolutely shocking. And as you know, even more than me, because more people are in contact with you, people are walking out of casualty. They just can't take it and they mm -hmm. walk out with detrimental effects on their lives. But we know this, and, and we've repeatedly said it in the doll. There have been, I can't tell you how many opportunities to make statements on mental health. And two, and a half, two years, a couple of months after being elected, we're still no nearer the, the promised review. They're using the review as an excuse not to implement Vision for Change. Who's they? The actual government. The actual government in power today, I'm afraid. And it was every government, to be fair. That's why, when the vision for change came into being in 2006, that the strongest recommendation at that time was that there would be an independent monitoring group set up. So that they wouldn't be dependent on a government to tell us whether it was being implemented or not. And that, as I said, set for two, three-year periods. 
It was doing such a good job highlighting what wasn't being done that the government of the day abolished it. So what, I mean, is it time to take to the streets on all of this? Well, actually, people are extraordinarily uh, patient. They are. With, with health, health generally. I, I, I've never understood their patience. I remember the nurses, going back a few years, were very, very vocal. There was an excellent public meeting outside the hospital. It seemed to die a death. They seemed to climb the hill, and I, I think it might be unfair to say they went down the hill, but certainly it died a death. Uh, there, there are solutions to all of this. If we come back to the hospital in Galway and the 50 beds, it's just unacceptable that management are given excuse after excuse. I don't know where the truth lies see, at this point. Building regulations. But is it management or is it unions? Because the unions want more staffing and, and the various unions that really I, want more staffing. You see, now, I, I have no notice of that, except... except and trust me, I'm not telling you lies. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, no, and I've heard it anecdotally myself. What I'm trying to get out here is I have asked as a TD, tabled many dull questions. That has never come to the fore. Now, what has come to the fore are building regulations, which is absolutely absurd. It's a new it, building, Catherine. I know that. The Mental Health Commission. The Mental Health Commission visit all psychiatric facilities on a regular basis. And I have quoted their documents to you ad nauseum mm -hmm. over the last number of years. They have pointed out the absence of care plans, the absence of privacy, the, the unsuitability of the building, the urgent need to move out of that building. And each time that they highlight it, this has gone back 10 years now, each single year, practically for the whole time that I was a city councillor, which was almost 17 years, the Mental Health Commission, every single year, visited Galway, produced a detailed report, a follow-up report, and each time management said, we know that, but we have a new building. The new building should never have been on the region. Do you remember that argument? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should have been up in Merlin Park. But they went ahead and did it. Now, what's extraordinary, the current facility, as I understand it, has 45 beds. On any given occasion, they could, there are more beds, there are more patients than beds. The Mental Health Commission actually highlighted in one of their reports that a patient was obliged to sleep on the ground. Now, th these are not my words. I, I look at these reports on a regular basis. So absence of individual care plans, absence of privacy, questions about other issues. And all of the time, management said, we're improving, but we're going to a new building. And they still haven't gone to the new building. Yeah, but I mean, you're saying 45 is what the capacity is there. At one stage, and I'm going from memory now, I'm not going from the file, there was 51 people there recently, That's just after Christmas, and, and some right. of them lying, lying on beds. Yet the new facility is a 45 bedded 50, facility. It's a 50 bed facility. It's a 50 bedded facility. It's theoretically, yeah. and, and you see, that. remember when the when Joe Broad, it was Tim Broderick? Tim Broderick, of, yeah. yeah. and a lot of other people there fought it. And I went down to public meetings. Arthur Carr, the whole lot of them, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Arthur Carr. We repeatedly pointed out that Galway was at breaking point. And not to close the wonderful facility in Bandlesloe, they simply ignored the people on the ground, including the psychiatrists, who, who again are not known for the radical nature. And they came out and the GP and said, don't do this. This is ridiculous. And the management came back and said, no, we'll have a wonderful uh, facility in Galway with adequate capacity. Yeah, but at 50 beds, that's not adequate if well, we're running at 51. Point. That's the whole point. That's yeah. the whole point. I mean, I mean, a lie is a strong word, but certainly there is no capacity, um, extra capacity now to, to cater. As it is, somebody slept on the ground. As it is, people are walking out of casualty. They can't They're wait. They're walking out of the psychiatric unit as well. Well, yes, yes. Sadly, yeah. they've, we've lost so many people and thank God some have been saved. I suppose I, I'm not sure how much time I have uh, on this. Well, we're closing I up on it, yeah, shortly, okay, well, well, Because I would love to discuss this because very often I'm on highlighting issues when I really want to highlight solutions. There are solutions to all of these problems like housing. There's a solution to this. But bad decisions are made and then there's a kind of a majority, a, a group think that this is the right decision. A wrong decision was made in the first place to build on the hospital. Now we have to live with that for the moment. But there should be an admission that 50 beds, that's lacking in capacity. And then where are the mental health teams? Where are the teams to deal with people in the community to enable and empower them? That was the, that was the strongest message separate from the independent monitoring body right. that, that we would enable and empower patients to live with whatever diagnosis they had with their family working with them none of that has been implemented we're, we're back with a huge focus on medication and of course there is a role for medication but it has to be part of an overall recovery focused model well, 
I'll have to leave for today, but again, just to, to, to um, hand it to me before I turn on the microphone there, um, the question was posed by Paula Keneally and um, Lindsay gave it to me from the news. And once the curtain starts, the new mental health unit at GHD, date for completion, opening and the full cost of same. The building, this was answered by Anne Cosgrove, the building was handed over from contractors last month, currently being equipped and prepared for operation. The planned date for operation of the unit is June 2018. The project cost is 20 million. So we'll come back to it again. Uh, but uh, Deputy Councillor Connolly, thank you for joining us uh, today on the programme. It's just a...